In this video, we're going to revisit our maze solver that we wrote for the recursion module, and now we're going to write one that's going to work using stacks. Once we're done, we'll compare the two solutions and discuss the differences and similarities. We have a maze class that has constants for open, tried, and path, although we won't be using path in this example. And then we have the size and the location of the solution of the maze and a two-dimensional integer array to hold the actual values of the maze. Remember, our maze is represented by integers where zero is a blocked location and one is a valid location. So we'll read that from the file just the same as we did before. We won't go through this. And then we have methods to try a position to check if a, if a position is the solution, getters for the rows and columns, and then a method to mark something on the path, although we won't use that here. A method to check if a position is valid. And valid position checks that a row and column value first is actually on the grid of the matrix. And then we check to see if it's available, that we haven't tried it or that it wasn't blocked. And then finally, we have a two string method that prints our maze out. We're going to introduce a position object. This is what we're actually going to store on the stack. And a position is essentially just an X, a pair of X, Y coordinates. The default is zero, zero, but you can specify the X and Y if you want. And that's what we'll be doing a lot of. And we have getters and setters for the position. The maze tester is not much different from what we saw before. The only difference is, is this maze solver is now going to use a stack to solve the maze as opposed to recursion. So our maze solver is going to have a maze object as part of it. And then we're going to have a traverse method. Our traverse method is going to initially set done to false because we've just started. We're going to create a new position and then we're going to push that onto a stack of positions. And this is what we're going to use to keep track of where we are in the maze. So then our loop, while we're not done, meaning we haven't reached the solution and while the stack isn't empty, because if the stack is empty, we haven't reached the solution, then there is no solution to the maze. So each time through this loop, we're going to pop a position. We're going to mark that it's been tried. And then we're going to check to see if that's the solution. If it is, we're done. Otherwise, we're going to check up, left, down, and right. And the way we check those is we're going to push each of those positions onto a stack. So you can see here we're pushing x minus 1 and y. That gives us the up direction the current x, and then y minus 1 gives us to the left, and so on. And if this looks familiar, if we look at the recursive solver, we actually do something very similar. While we haven't solved the maze, we check in each of those positions. The only difference here is that we're actually calling another method. Here, we're actually just pushing that value onto the stack. And then we're going to return done. Now, one downside is we're not actually marking the path. We're just returning if the maze is true or not. So let's run this just to verify that it works. So we'll start with test file dot text. And you can see that it did successfully traverse the maze. You can see these twos gives it the paths that it tried. If we tried every valid location, then this wouldn't be a very useful solver. But at the very least, it could say that it's possible. Because if we try with our other maze, test file two dot text, that turns out to be a maze with no path. So this is a quick example of how we can use stacks to solve a problem that we previously did with recursion. 